Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. We're picking up our conversation with Oslam on Anuran and John Weeks, because on Thursday, an interesting opinion article in The Guardian was penned by Sir Christopher Pissarides. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2010, and the title of his piece is Greece Faces a Future as Europe's Outcast. A yes vote is the only solution. Our guests today do not agree that a yes vote is the only solution, and we want want to hear some of their counter arguments, the arguments that were made by Sir Pissaridis. So first of all, let me thank Oslem and John. Thank you for being with us. Thank, thank you for having us. Great. So let's start, get right to it, and talk about some of these arguments um, that Sir Pissaridis makes. He's clearly against austerity. He's talked about how it's been disastrous for the people of Greece, but he wants Greeks to vote yes on the referendum vote. Let's, let's pull up one of his quotations from the piece. He said, quote, consider events in the aftermath of a no vote. If banks open, every sensible Greek will take their euros out of the banks. The ECB will not provide the liquidity assistance to fill the gaps, and the Greek government will be forced to issue its own liquid assets to capitalize them. This will effectively be a parallel currency. So, John, I want to get your point of view. Doesn't he have a point here that this could create a parallel currency? Well, the first thing to realize is that um, the uh, he is a milder voice, but there, there, there's a whole chorus out there that's saying to the Greece, Greeks, you know, if you vote, no, this is the end of the world as you know it, you know. If you, if you thought World War II was bad when Germany occupied, oops, I guess they can't say that. But they say, if you think it's been bad in the past, it's going to be absolutely horrendous if you vote yes. So there's a real scare tactic going on here. Now, will there be a run on the banks? There are capital controls. In the past, governments have gone years with capital controls. I lived in Peru about... 30 years ago, when there were controls on taking money out of the banks every day for several years. These are things which people get used to and they, they adjust to. The rich mm -hmm. won't be very happy with it, but they are things you can adjust to. So I don't think it will be disaster the day after a no vote. It won't be bed and roses, but it won't be a disaster. Okay, and when you say capital control, so the so the banks basically tell their customers you can only take up to a certain amount of money out. Is is that what you mean? Well, they can, uh, they can take several forms. The current situation is that the ATM people are limited to uh, uh, sixty euros a day from uh, ATM machine. Sixty euros a day is about a um, I would say about seventy five dollars. Um, and uh, while that's not um, uh, a tremendous amount. It is enough to get by, particularly being so the Greek government has said that no in private institution in Greece can charge people for uh, overrunning uh, deadlines on making uh, payments. But uh, I think probably Aslam knows more about the details of this than I do, but I think it is a manageable situation. Aslam, I want to get your take on this, because I, I would be hearing this and I'd say, but wait a minute, that's my money. Why can't I access my own money? That, that just seems so unjust. Look, the capital flows, most of all, aims at uh, limiting the amount that can be transferred out of the country. And the whole developed countries of the world uh, came to the levels of development that we see today by having such quantity and time restrictions on flows of money out of the country. If you are to make a bank transaction within the country, this is fine, you can do that. Now, the, normally with capital controls, there wouldn't be necessarily a limit on how much you can withdraw uh, in one day. The reason why they have to do that in this very transitionary period is the panic. And this panic, mind you, is being generated deliberately by the uh, Eurogroup governments, by the extreme conservatives, as Mr. Cyprus uh, has called them. Uh, so under normal conditions, the cap on day-to-day -day, uh, removals will probably be relaxed uh, in a reasonable time period. And uh, let's invite people also to think for a minute. If you are withdrawing 90 euros a day, what does that imply for your uh, monthly income? Mm. Uh, the majority, 99% of the people in Greece, wouldn't be having that sort of monthly income to begin with. But obviously, you would be ha you would you you would have the right to decide uh, how you manage your own liquidity, and I think. 
this part of the limit uh, doesn't have to last very long. Oh. Now, I want to, however, ask uh, Mr. Pisarides the opposite question. What does he expect from a yes vote? What does he expect from the continuation of the same austerity policies mm -hmm. that engineered an economic depression of the orders of magnitudes that were deeper than the Great Depression that the U.S. economy experienced in the 1930s, along with a humanitarian crisis in terms of rising unemployment, rising poverty, rising inequality, where people have lost their fundamental human rights. These policies will not repair any of the damage. It will not help to reconstruct the Greek economy. And even in its own stated aims, it's so hypocritical because it will make the sustainability of the public debt yeah. also economically more problematic. Even the IMF uh, has admitted that in a, in a report it was uh, uncovered uh, a couple of days ago. So we all know that. What is this about? This is about giving a lesson to a uh, government who has stood against austerity on completely reasonable minimalistic policies. Yeah. But this is just discovering the uh, lies that they have been telling, the European governments have been telling to us all across Europe as well as in Greece, so they don't have any tolerance uh, for uh, this simple fact. Okay, let's talk about another point that Sir um, Pissardes makes, and um, I'm going to get to you, John. Um, he's. I'm going to bring up a quote here. He says, quote, Greece will have defaulted on its debt and access to international markets will be lost for many years. Reforms to improve competitiveness, which have not been forthcoming, will be even more difficult to implement. John, what's your take on that? Doesn't he have a point here that Greece could sort of become a pariah to global markets? First thing, let me say the competitiveness is a bunch of nonsense, but we don't really have time to uh, 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 discuss that. Let's talk about the uh, being frozen out of um, uh, capital markets. It is a scare tactic. It really is a scare tactic because we have many examples over the last 30 or 40 years of countries which defaulted on their debt, then were pariahs, you know, no one wanted to have anything to do with them. And then a year later, 18 months later, they come back into the uh, international financial markets and, and they can borrow. Give us an example, in. yeah. Right. Well, a good example, of course, is Argentina which in 2003 defaulted on its debt, and after that grew at about 7 8% a year for 10 years. It has troubles now, but uh, troubles now, but uh, that has nothing to do with it defaulting on the debt. So that, that is an excellent example. Uh, you say, we are paying, and as a result of not paying, you suddenly, and this would be true of Greece, they will have a balanced budget. <clears throat> they, it's not a question they don't have enough cash or they aren't collecting enough taxes. Even the Troika, the dreaded Troika, says that the, uh, Greece is now running a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. And they also have a uh, uh, export equal to import, so they don't have a, they don't have a trade deficit. The, the, the situation is not strong. It's not wonderful, but it is potentially manageable. Okay. Um, Oslam, I'm just going to get a quick final word from you. Uh, the situation's manageable. That's what John says. You're in agreement. If they don't pay to their creditors this illegal, illegitimate and odious debt, the situation is manageable. They can well live uh, within their means. Uh, they can run a balanced budget. Uh, this government is also dedicated to uh, collecting the uh, taxes that the oligarchs of Greece has been avoiding uh, for years. And they can put that into good use and uh, manage a recovery by increasing the minimum wages, by uh, launching programs of employers of last resort where the government uh, spends their well-earned uh, tax revenues on generating uh, jobs in social care, in health, education, jobs that are anyway now needed to tackle the humanitarian crisis of uh, Greece. And these will give a boost to demand and growth. Mm -hmm. And the whole uh, story about negative effects on their international competitiveness and exports it's completely wrong. I agree with John uh, totally uh, on that. Exports is about structural competitiveness and industrial policy and investment policy. If they can manage to launch decent policies of recovery, 
uh, they may even manage to improve their uh, export positions in the uh, medium run. Now, the thing that we have to remember, the loans that have been given to Greece have never been used for the Greek people and the Greek economy. Only 10% of that has been used to finance the current expenditures of the Greek government in the past five years. 90% of that uh, went back to the creditors. So uh, the new loans that will come uh, in the new program after a yes uh, vote, if as such materializes, uh, will not do any good uh, in terms of increasing the spending capability of the government. It will do harm because it will come with the so-called strings, the conditionalities, the same damaging conditionalities, further cuts to pensions, further cuts to uh, workers' rights uh, to bargain for uh, decent wages, further privatization at fire sale prices. So I see only harm coming from a new deal yeah. and no... Good. Yeah. So why do why why vote for a yes? Okay, Oslam and John, thank you so much. We will certainly be uh, following this story. July fifth is the referendum vote. I know you two will be following it as well. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.